الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين Amma Bad as to what proceeds with the aid and assistance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we shall conduct our study of Bulughul Muram a book which is of Ahadith al Ahkam narrations in relation to the Ahkam to the Islamic rulings. We will start from Kitab al-Siyam, the book of fasting. Last year, with the father of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, due to the short intervals and travels that I had, we managed to cover the first two narrations in the book of fasting. We will read those narrations for the benefit of the students. And then inshallah, we shall start the third narration, the hadith of Ibn Umar. The way we are going to conduct the classes is in the following way. We will read the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ and then we will do takhreej of the hadith. Takhreej basically means that we will verify where this hadith has been reported. The second issue will be gharib al-hadith. So all the words which are unfamiliar and with regards to the dhabt of the words meaning the diacritical marks and the pronunciation of the words will also be clarified. Third will be the fiqh al-hadith. What rulings can be derived from this hadith and what the ulama have spoken about it, including the ikhtilafat, the differences of opinions, and that which is the most closest and the most correct to the sunnah, and that which is the madhab of the imams of Ahlul Hadith. The fourth will be Fawaid al-Hadith, the benefits that can be derived from this hadith. And the fifth issue, if there is, it will be from the Nawazin, any contemporary issues which are relating to the 21st century. So this is how I conduct my class of studies of hadith. The first issue which is going to be discussed today is the definition of fasting, linguistically and technically. We have Imam al-Sana'ani, rahimahullah, who in Subud al-Salam briefly gave a description of what is fasting in the Arabic language and what it is technically. Then Imam al-Sana'ani, he was one of the Imams of the Ahlul Hadith of his time from Yemen, before Sheikh Muqbil ibn Hadi al-Wadi rahimahullah ta'ala, and a contemporary to another Imam of the Ahlul Hadith in Yemen, Imam al-Shawkani. Imam al-Sana'ani rahimahullah, he states that fasting is one of the pillars of al-Islam. The one who rejects fasting is a disbeliever. Fasting was prescribed in the second year of al-Hijrah, meaning after Hijrah, when the Muslims migrated from Mecca to Medina, then fasting became prescribed upon them. Linguistically, it says that fasting means to Stop or refrain from something. And then he gave its technical meaning, istilahan, its sharia-based meaning. When I was reading today with regards to the definitions of the definition of fasting, I must have read today at least 75 definitions at the least. Since morning, I read about 75 definitions of fasting. After reading the definitions of fasting, I decided in contrast of what the people of knowledge have said, is to give you a comprehensive definition of fasting in the Sharia with regards to all the criticism that I read. 
something which is comprehensive, something which will be, if criticized, there will always be somebody that will criticize, the criticism will be very restrictive for the words that have been chosen. So first of all, definition of fasting linguistically. As-siyamu lughatan. Al-imsaq. Tayyip. Fasting in the Arabic language means to abstain or to refrain. فَيَعُمُّ الْإِمْسَاكُ عَنِ الْقَوْلِ وَالْعَمَلِ مِنَ النَّاسِ وَالدَّوَابِ وَغَيْرِهَا So fasting in the Arabic language means to abstain, to stop doing something or to refrain from doing something. This refraining constrains people speaking with one another, doing things, meaning actions. Also the same with walking animals and others. So basically fasting in the olden days would be somebody who would refrain from speaking with people, doing actions with people as well as animals and others. So this is what fasting means in the Arabic language. Are we clear? Do we understand? Al-imsak. فَيَعُمُّ imsak. The word al-imsak, which means to refrain or to abstain or to stop, includes refraining and abstaining from talking, from doing actions, whether they're with human beings or whether they're with animals. So it seems that in the olden days, people would fast and abstain from their animals because they would have a lot of cattle. The Arabs would have a lot of cattle. They would have sheep. They would have horses. They would have camels, etc. So this is what fasting would mean in the Arabic language. Are we clear? Elaborating on what Sanani said when he said stop and refrain. Imam Abu Ubaid, who died in the year 224 after Hijrah, in his book known as Gharib al-Hadith, he said, it refers to every type of abstainer who abstains from speaking, food, drink, or movement of walking, or riding, or set out by traveling. Whoever does these actions, then that person is considered to be fasting linguistically. This is what Imam Abu Ubaid said, who has a book called Gharib al-Hadith. Every single talib al-ilm of hadith should have this book in his library. Died in the year 224 after Hijrah. He wrote a book called Gharib al-Hadith where he explained unfamiliar words of what they mean linguistically and what their context or what the intent is in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when he talked about fasting linguistically, he said it refers to every type of abstainer from speaking, food, drink, or movement of walking, or to ride or set about by traveling. Any of these actions, he says, who would do these actions and abstain from these actions, then that person would be considered to be fasting linguistically. طيب, now we come to its المعنى الاستلاحي أو الشرعي In the Sharia it implies abstinence specifically from eating drinking and marital uh, relationships etc. In the manner it has been transmitted in the Sharia at a specific period of time starting from dawn till sunset with specific conditions for specific type of people explained in detail in the Quran and the Ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. With the firm intention of carrying out the orders of Allah pertaining this action to be ibadah for Allah alone, not just mere abstinence. This specific abstinence also includes idle talk and intimate speech that leads to its advancement in action and other than that. 
It also includes unlawful and disliked speech due to the ahadith that have been reported with the prohibition of these acts in a state of fasting more severely than other times. Once again, I will repeat it. Tayyip. In the Sharia, it implies abstinence specifically from eating, drinking, and marital relationships, etc. In the manner it has been transmitted in the Sharia, at a specific period of time, starting from dawn till sunset, with specific conditions for specific type of people, explained in detail in the Quran and the Ahadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. With a firm intention of carrying out the orders of Allah, pertaining this action to be ibadah for Allah alone, for Allah only. Not just mere abstinence. So if a kafir was to fast all day, it would just be fasting, wouldn't be ibadah for Allah. This specific abstinence also includes idle talk and intimate speech that leads to its advancement in action and other than that. It also includes unlawful and disliked speech due to the ahadith that have been reported with the prohibition of these acts in a state of fasting. More severely than other times, especially meaning that they are haram, but in the month of haram, they are more severe. Now, so this is the definition of fasting. Now we come to the next issue or the a question, which is that is there a link between the linguistic meaning and the technical meaning, which is abstinence and to refrain. So the linguistic and the Sharia meaning have something in common. That when the word Som is used, both of them refer to abstinence and to refrain. But that which separates the two is that the technical definition includes two things which make it different from the linguistic meaning. Number one, Specific things to be abstained from. So the Sharia has restricted and specified to abstain from food, drink, and marital relationships, etc. At a specific time. At a specific time with specific conditions for specific people. So not everybody has to fast if they are, it's for some time, specific type of people. Children who have not reached the age of puberty do not have to fast. Women who are menstruating do not have to fast. People who are old do not have to fast. People who are sick do not have to fast. People who are traveling do not have to fast, etc. Number two, this abstinence or refraining or abstaining is done as an act of worship. So we have to include this in the definition. Most of the definitions that were criticized was that the word was not mentioned. So anybody could do it. When you say at-ta'abbud lillah, this abstinence is done as an act of worship, now you have separated all those who may abstain and refrain from eating and drinking, but they don't do it on the basis of ibad. Now we took the first hadith. Tayyip, what was the first hadith? Now we come to the second issue after knowing its linguistic issue, which is verifying where this narration has been transmitted in the books of hadith. طيب ده حديث ابن عمر وعن ابن عمر رضي الله تعالى عنهما قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول إذا رأيتموه فصوموا وإذا رأيتموه فأفطروا فإن غم عليكم فقدروا له متفق عليه ولمسلم فإن أغمي عليكم فقدروا له ثلاثين وللبخاري فأكمل العدة ثلاثين نويتد ابن عمر رضي الله تعالى عنهما I heard Allah's Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم saying fast when you see the new moon and break your fast when you see it but if the sky is cloudy calculate the month as 30 days agreed upon طيب. Muslim has if it is cloudy calculate the month as 30 days Al-Bukhari has complete the number of days at 30. Why did Ibn Hajar have to mention this? Why did he mention what Bukhari mentioned, what Muslim mentioned, different wordings? So first thing is we, had, we just came across the hadith. 
The hadith is sahih. As we all know that it's been reported by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. Imam Al-Bukhari reported this hadith in his sahih, hadith number 1900. Imam Muslim reported this hadith in his sahih, hadith number 2471. Imam Al-Nisai reported this hadith in his sunan, hadith number 2119. Imam Ibn Majah reported this hadith in his sunan, hadith number 1654. Tayyip, I've restricted only to the generally six books of hadith. All these Bukhari, Muslim, Nasai, and Ibn Majah, all of them have narrated, they have transmitted this narration on the authority, meaning through the chain, through Muhammad ibn Muslim, ibn Ubaidullah, ibn Ubaidullah, ibn Shihab al-Zuhri, Tayyip, who died in the year 124 after Hijrah, who said the son of Abdullah ibn Umar Salim narrated to me that Abdullah ibn Umar said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Kulluhum min tariqi ibn Shihab al-Zuhri, qala akhbarani Salim, anna ibn Umar radiyallahu anhu qal, qala sabit Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when we look at these references which I've quoted to you, where do all these references with their different chains of transmission, where do they all meet? Where's the multaqa? Where's the meeting point? With all their roots, they all meet at Az-Zuhri. Imam Az-Zuhri. Ibn Shihab Az-Zuhri. Muslim. Muhammad Ibn Muslim. Ibn Ubaidullah Ibn Ubaidullah Ibn Shihab Az-Zuhri who died in the year 124. He heard from Abdullah ibn Umar's son, Salim, who heard from his father, Tayyip, Abdullah ibn Umar, who heard from the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Is that clear? So if you were to ask all these different narrations that we find, when we find the narration in Muslim, in Bukhari, in Muslim, in Nasai, in Ibn Majah, Tayyip, Hadith is Sahih in Bukhari and Muslim, if you are asked with regards to this narration, Tayyip, that this narration which has been reported in Al-Bukhari, in Muslim, in Nasai, in Ibn Imaj, what's the common transmission about this? You would say that they all meet up at Ibn Shihab, from Salim, from Ibn Umar, from the Prophet Sallallahu But there is one issue, and that is the narration of Ibn Imaj. So we have all of them have reported the same narration. But Ibn Majah has reported something additional, extra, which Bukhari and Muslim and Nasai did not mention. What did Ibn Majah report that is additional? What did he say? So Ibn Majah narrated this hadith in his sunan, hadith number 1654, and has the additional wording, وَكَانَ ibn Umara. Yasumu qabla al-hilal biyum. That Ibn Umar would fast one day before the new crescent was seen. So Ibn Majah narrated this additional word. Now we know to fast one day before the sighting of the crescent or the new moon has been prohibited. What did Amr ibn As say? What did we find in the hadith of Abu Huraira, which is the first hadith? So this is now an issue for us. So the issue we have now is this additional wording. And Ibn Umar would fast. So first of all, before we go into this additional wording, whether this additional wording is established or whether Abdullah Ibn Umar did do this, whether it's accepted or rejected, let's see first, let's analyze this statement. وَكَانَ Ibn Umar يَسُومُ قَبْلَ الْهِلَالِ بِيَوْمِ Ibn Umar would fast one day before the new crescent was seen. How did the people of knowledge interpret what Ibn Majah narrated with this additional word? Some of the people of knowledge interpreted this to mean the following. Some said that Ibn Umar used to do this in the month of Sha'ban only, precautionary. Perhaps because it could be Ramadan. 
and he would not count that as a day of the month of Ramadan. And he would not do what the people would do by not fasting on that day in accordance to the hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, even if it meant he fasted 31 days. So what we understand is that Ibn Umar would only do this precautionary fast at the beginning of Ramadan if there were clouds and dust which would prevent the new moon, the crescent, from being sighted. In such a scenario and condition, he would fast. If the sky was clear and the new moon was not sighted, he would not fast as there was no prevention being a barrier for the new moon to be sighted. But if there was a prevention and if it was cloudy, then he would fast. But at the end of the month, he would celebrate Eid with the people, regardless of whether he started before them or with them or whatever the case may be. He would celebrate Eid with the people and he would not count that day of fasting to be from amongst the days of Ramadan. Meaning that he would complete 30 days and celebrate Eid, even if the number of days was not complete. And he would do all this as precautionary. Ihtiyat. So this is what some of the people of knowledge have tried to explain why Ibn Umar did this. Do we understand that? Why did Ibn Umar oppose the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, apparently, seems, or do something contrary to what the Prophet ﷺ said. This is what they said. Are you following me? That they said this is why he did this. Do you understand? If you were to read this in Ibn Majah, you would not find why. What well, the reason I'm giving you, this is what they have said. So for example, Imam Muhammad ibn Abdul Hadi, a Sindhi, who died in the year 1138 after Hijrah. Imam Muhammad ibn Abdul Hadi as Sindhi was the Sheikh of Imam Muhammad Hayat as Sindhi. Imam Muhammad Hayat as Sindhi is the Sheikh of Sheikh al Islam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab. So he's the teacher of the teacher of Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab. And he used to teach hadith in Medina, the chief scholar of hadith in Medina. He has written. Marginal notes on all the six books of hadith. On the notes of Sunan ibn Majah, when he came to this statement of Ibn Umar, this is what he said. He said, His statement that he would fast before the crescent was seen. He writes in his footnotes of Sunan Ibn Majah that he would fast voluntarily. That which is apparent is that he would fast voluntarily. Nafil, with the niyyah of nafil. And there is no problem with that and Allah knows best. End of speech. This is what Muhammad Hayat Sindhi said. Al-Abdul Faqir, this poor servant, the slave of Allah, Dhul Fiqar, says the reality is that there is a problem with this. As this goes against the first hadith of this chapter which we are studying, of Book of Fasting. The hadith narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, in which the Prophet stopped the people from fasting one or two days before the advent of Ramadan. Tayyip, reported by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. Tayyip. So how can it be Imam Sindhi rahimahullah say that Ibn Umar fasted with the intention of a nafil fast on that day. Imam Basindi seems to say that there is no problem with this. But we have a problem. So, Imam Sindhi states that this narration in isolation, meaning Sindhi, rahimahullah, Muhammad ibn Abdul Hadi al-Kabir, he says that when you just look at the narration of Ibn Majah, in isolation, See, that this narration in isolation has no mention of not fasting before the advent or before the commence of the month of Ramadan. And he states that the meaning of the hadith is that it is not obligatory to fast a day or two before the month of Ramadan. But it's permissible voluntarily. 
And he considers that to be the truth with regards to the text of the hadith. He said, هذا هو الحق. He adds, voluntarily fasting, there is no prohibition of it in the wording of the hadith. طيب. So this is what, this is now Imam Asindi's explanation. He says, there's nothing. طيب. He says, the only obligation here is start to fast when you see the book. So this is Imam Asindi rahimahullah's argument. Tayyip, which to be really honest is Marju. Tayyip, further this goes against what Ibn Umar narrated from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam contrary to this, which is not fasting on the 29th of Sha'ban and to complete 30 days if it is cloudy. Who narrated this? So we have now with this additional wording that Ibn Umar would fast. We have this hadith which is under study, which has been reported by Bukhari, Muslim, Nasai, and Ibn Majah. Then we have another narration from Abdullah ibn Umar himself, from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi sallam, where he, Abdullah ibn Umar, narrated himself by saying, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi said, that if you can't see the moon on the 29th of Sha'ban, then complete 30 days if it is cloudy. Hadith number 1970 in Al-Bukhari and 2472 in Muslim. Now, now this makes the problem even further. So now we have an additional wording. I haven't given you yet the wording of this additional wording. But yet again, we have a narration from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which is muttafaqun alayh which goes against what Abdullah ibn So Abdullah ibn Umar is going against what that which he narrated from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam apparently so far under this case study. Tayyip. Hadith number 1907 in Al-Bukhari and in Muslim 2472. Going back to what As-Sindi said Rahimahullah. I say in conclusion, the argument of Imam as Sindhi is weak and goes contrary to what the position of Jamahirul Ahli al Hadith have stated, which is the prohibition of fasting voluntarily a day or two before the sighting of the new crescent, except for the one who is exempted and accustomed to have been fasting, like the Sunnah days the middays of the month, making up the fasts, making up fasts for the wow or something like that, where those days, that those few days before Ramadan fall under that. Apart from that, the hadith of Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As and the hadith of Abu Huraira clearly state that the one who fasts has basically فَقَدْ أَصَى عَبَ الْقَاسِمِ صلى الله عليه وسلم has been disobedient to Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it could be argued that this was the ijtihad of Abdullah ibn Umar. And he was alone in doing this. Somebody may say the argument, okay, maybe Abdullah ibn Umar did not come across the hadith of Abu Hurair. Yes or no? Possible. But we say, but that cannot be used as an argument. That's Al-Baytul An-Kabut because Abdullah ibn Umar himself has narrated the hadith to complete 30 days if it's cloudy. Yes, hadith al-Bukhari and muslim So then how do we understand this? So we cannot say it's either his ijtihad as well because here is a narrator going narrate and acting something against and contrary to what he narrates. So it could be argued that this was the ishtihad of Ibn Umar and he was alone in doing it. But this is contrary to what has been reported from him with conflicting reports. The answer to that is the following. Like I mentioned, that Imam al-Bukhari has narrated in his Sahih, Hadith number 1907. Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, said, Anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal, Ash-shahru tis'u wa ishroon layla. فَلَا تَصُومُوا حَتَّى تَرَوْهُ 
فَإِنْ غُمَّ عَلَيْكُمْ فَأَكْمِلُوا الْعِدَّةَ ثَلَاثِي Allah Messenger Sallallahu said the month can be 29 nights, i.e. days. And do not fast till you see the moon. And if the sky is overcast, then complete, meaning cloudy and unclear, then complete Sha'ban as 30 days. Who narrated this narration? Abdullah ibn Umar narrated this narration. The second hadith, the hadith of Imam Muslim, hadith number 2472. He said that, 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 لا تصوم حتى تراه ولا تفطر حتى تراه إلا أن يغم عليكم فإن غم عليكم فقدروا له. The month can be twenty nine nights, i.e. days, and do not fast till you see the crescent, and do not cease fasting until you see the crescent. And if the sky is cloudy for you, then calculate فقدره thirty days for the month of Ramadan. Muslim Al Bayhaqi has also narrated this narration in As-Sunan Al-Kubra, hadith number 8177, where he said, on the authority of Ibn Umar, إِنَّمَا الشَّهْرُ تِسْءُونَ وَعِشْرُونَ فَلَا تَسُومُ حَتَّى تَرَوْهُ وَلَا تُفْتِرُ حَتَّى تَرَوْهُ فَإِنْ غُمَّ عَلَيْكُمْ فَقْدُرُوا لَهُ The month is 29 nights. إِنَّمَا الشَّهْرُ تِسْءُونَ وَعِشْرُونَ That the month is 29 days. I do not fast until you see the crescent. And if the sky is cloudy upon you, then count 30 days. Tayyip. So these three narrations, Bukhari, Muslim, and Abu Dawood. We have the first multaqa, which, which was Ibn Shihab al-Zuhri, of Abdullah ibn Umar. These narrations, all three Imams, Al-Imam Bukhari, Imam Muslim, and Imam Al-Bayhaqi, have narrated on the authority of Imam Malik from Abdullah ibn Dinar, from Abdullah ibn Umar, from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So where is the multaqa for this? Malik, Imam Malik rahimullah, and Abdullah ibn Dinar. Where is the multaqa? Abdullah ibn Dinar. All narrate from Malik, going from Abdullah ibn Dinar, who narrates from Abdullah ibn Umar, and who narrates from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hadith number from Imam al-Bayhaqi is 8177. As-Sunan al-Kubra. Bayhaqi has many books. It's As-Sunan al-Kubra of al-Bayhaqi. These narrations, these three which are mentioned, which mention contrary to what Abdullah ibn Umar's practice is be, it would be if this additional wording was accepted from Ibn Majah. These three reports of Abdullah ibn Umar from the Prophet Sallallahu strengthen and are in accordance to what Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu said, which is the first hadith in the book of fasting in Bulugh al which also supports the hadith of Amr ibn As radiallahu anhu. The sanad for all of these is Malik, Abdullah ibn Dinar, ibn Umar, and the Prophet Sallallahu So we know that the problem has started. Where has the problem stemmed from? The additional wording which Ibn Majah reported by himself, conflicting Bukhari, Muslim, and an Nasai. Tayyip, now we have this that Abu Dawood in his Sunan, Ad-Daru Qutni in his Sunan, and Al-Bayhaqi in his Sunan Al-Qubra have also narrated something additional, just like Ibn Majah. They have narrated some additional wording which explains what Ibn Majah said. And the Isnad is Qawi. The chain of transmission is also strong. Tayyip, well, what has been said? So this narration can be found in Abu Dawood, Dar Qutni, and Sunan Al Kubra of Al Bayhaqi. They said, "Qala Nafi." Nafi, the student of Ibn Umar, says, "Fakana Ibn Umar 
إذا كان شعبان 29 نظر له فإن رأي فذاك وإن لم يرى ولم يحل دون منظره سحاب ولا فترة أصبح مفترة فإن حال دون منظره سحاب أو فترة أصبح صائما قال فكان ابن عمر يفتر مع الناس ولا يأخذ بهذا الحساب When the 29th of Sha'ban came Ibn Umar would send someone who tried to sight the new moon, the crescent for him If it was sighted then well and good So if you said he would, Abdullah ibn Umar in the 29th would send somebody said, go, go look for the moon, go sight the moon. If that person came back and said, you know, the moon has been sighted, end of story, no issues. In case it was not sighted and there was no cloud, no dustiness before him on the horizon, he would not keep fast for the next day. He wouldn't fast. He would complete 30 days. If they appeared on the horizon before him, cloud, or dust, he would fast the following day, precautionary. Ibn Umar would end his fasting alone with the people. So if he started, just say the people didn't fast, but he fasted, he would fast, he would end fasting alone. Start one day before them, but the day they would do Eid, he would do Eid. He wouldn't do Eid the other day, another day after them or before them, and did not follow this calculation meaning that he wouldn't consider that precautionary day as one of the days of Ramadan. So we have this now. We have the additional wording of Ibn Majah. And the, and the additional wording that can be found in Sunan Abi Dawood, Ad-Dar Qutni, and in Al-Bayhaqi, explains what Ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma used to do. So he wasn't just fasting for the sake of fasting like some people do. Oh, tomorrow, you know, I want to just get into the habit of fasting before the month of Ramadan. I want to fast two, three days before Ramadan. Allah. See the difference? If we are to accept this. Remember, I've given you no verdict on this additional wording so far. I'm just giving you the reasons. So we know now that Abdullah ibn Umar, when he came to the crescent of the month of Ramadan, would have a mawqif, a particular position. And that would be, he would send somebody, go, go, go see, go, go look for the moon. We we'll come back, the moon has been sighted, alhamdulillah. He would look into the skies and see, is the cloudy, is it clear? No dust, he would say, go look for the moon. He would come back and say, we couldn't find the moon. He said, we're going to complete that. If he saw that the sky is cloudy, dusty, and it's very difficult to see the moon, the, the crescent, then Abdullah ibn Umar would fast. And that day that he would fast, he would not consider that day as the first of Ramadan. He wouldn't calculate it. So whenever the people would stop fasting, he would do eat with them, regardless of if he kept that day of fasting or not. <laughs> Is it clear? So now we understand what it meant by Abdullah ibn Umar and what circumstances he did this. Is it clear? This is all fiqh of the hadith. This is fiqh. This is, this is how deep and in-depth the Ahlul Hadith are when it comes to the understanding. Did you see how they connected the narration of Ibn Majah to Abu Dawood, to Ibn Al-Bayhaqi, to ad daru Qutni, where this has been mentioned. So these are all additional. Bukhari and Muslim didn't narrate none of these words. On the contrary, we find Abdullah ibn Umar narrating something contrary to this. He's narrating what all the Ahlul Hadith are on the position, Jamahiru Ahlul Hadith, who say you can't fast, even with the, even with the intention of nafil. So the nafil fasting of Abdullah ibn Umar, hypothetically, if he accept it, is not like the nafil fasting of the people. There's a sky high difference of why he would, on what basis he would do it. Are you following me? So now we come to give the ruling. These additional wordings that can be found, firstly in Sunan ibn Majah, and then in Abu Dawood, and in 
Dar Qutni and Al Bayhaqi. We say that they are to consider to be shad, anomalous. Meaning in the chain of transmission for Sunan Ibn Majah, for example, for the first additional wording is of Sunan Ibn Majah. In the chain of transmission of Sunan Ibn Majah, in the Isnad of Sunan Ibn Majah, the Sheikh of Ibn Majah, Muhammad bin Uthman al-Uthmani, who died about 240 after Hijrah, the scholars have said about him that he is reliable and truthful. Thiqatun Saduq, like Imam al-Bukhari said his Saduq. Imam Abu Hatim al-Razi said his Thiqatun Saduq. Imam Ibn Hibban has said that he's Thiqa. But, oh, but they said, except that he makes mistakes and opposes other reliable narrators at times. So although this narrator is Thiqatun Saduq, but a lot of his narrations, they oppose. And his, this narration with this additional wording opposes the exact hadith which Abdullah ibn Umar narrated, which have been reported by Bukhari and Muslim and al bayhaqi from Malik and Abdullah ibn Dinar and ibn Umar from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this additional wording is shah, not accepted. Although the Salad, that's why you know that a hadith could be sahih, one part of it could be accepted and the other part of it could be shad. This is a great example of it. And it's mukhalif. When a reliable narrator contradicts other reliable narrators, then it's not considered to be munkar, it's called shad. So this additional wording is not accepted and opposes what has been transmitted authentically. This is because Imam al-Bukhari has also narrated another hadith, 1906. Imam Muslim Hadith number 2465, Sunan, Sunan Abi Dawood 2320, Al Bayhaqi, Tayyib, in his Sunan Al Qubra 816, and Al Dar Qutni, Hadith number 2167. So the additional wording in Sunan Ibn Majah, Sunan Abi Dawood, Sunan Dar Qutni, Sunan Al Qubra of Imam Al Bayhaqi is to be considered anomalous shad because the authentic hadith of Imam Al Bukhari and Muslim on the authority of Imam Malik. From Malik, from Abdullah ibn Dinar, states that Ibn Umar narrated to complete 30 days if the crescent and the new moon was not visible, and Allah knows best. We therefore say that Ibn Umar's actions were in accordance to the Sunnah. When we reconcile all the narrations, we say that we reconcile the action of Abdullah ibn Umar's to be in accordance to what he narrated and what has been transmitted authentically from the Prophet ﷺ. And that was not to fast on the day of Shak, Yawm Shak. And this additional wording is not accepted for him or his action. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. So those who try to use this additional wording as proof to support the argument should know that even if it is hypothetically agreed, Ibn Umar would break his fast and celebrate Eid with the people. And these people don't do that. Regardless of when he started. He would only do this if the new moon was not visible because of it being cloudy and dusty. If it was visible and was not sighted, he would not fast. Also, he done this precautionary ihtiyat with the intention of it being voluntarily. I would not count it as a fast of Ramadan while the people do. To those who do fast one day before Ramadan as it is in their madhab oppose everything here which Abdullah ibn Umar did. So there's no argument for them in what Abdullah ibn Umar did. And by this Alhamdulillah, we finished the takhreej of the hadith of Abdullah ibn Umar of Abu Lughul Maram Wallahu a'lamu bisawab wa jazakumullahu khairah طيب وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وجزاكم الله خيرا وبارك فيكم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته